Welcome everyone to Neverwinter on PC. My name is Anna, and today it is time for episode number three of Fun with Moth. This episode is all about the new refinement system, and today we're diving into whether preservation wards and coal wards are mathematically viable to use and what their actual value is. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you'd like to see more information about the Neverwinter, hit the subscribe button. Before we dive into the refinement system itself, I want to address the success chance aspect a bit, because not everyone seems to fully grasp this concept yet. So we're going to work with a, a scenario of 1% upgrade chance, and I'll explain a little bit why uh, I picked this um, scenario later on. Um, but in a 1% upgrade chance scenario, what you typically see that in the average amount of attempts needed to upgrade is 100% divided by 1 is 100. Um, yeah, Streak Breaker is not included in here yet, but yeah, we'll get there later on. Um, so if you have a 1% chance to upgrade, we can dive into the math a little bit here. So the chance to uh, succeed on the first attempt is of course 1% uh, because it's a 1% upgrade chance. If you then look into the chance to succeed for the second attempt, you first need to fail and then you need to succeed. That's if you exactly want to succeed on the second attempt. If you want to succeed on the third attempt, you have to fail twice and then you have to succeed. So. You can write it like this and if you look at this trend you can also see that the fourth attempt of course is like this um, of course you don't have to write all of this out you can reformulate this into a formula so the chance to succeed on attempt number n is one minus the success chance so this one minus one percent is 99 percent to the power of your attempt number minus one multiplied by your success chance this is a brief way of writing down the lines that we just had now. And now this is the su chance to success, uh, succeed on a specific attempt. If you want to find the chance to succeed by attempt number n, so if we want to succeed by attempt number four, we have to add up all the success chances of the previous and the current success chance. So we have to uh, sum up the the success uh, the chance to succeed by uh, on attempt number one two three and four all of them added up and uh, gives you the uh, chance to succeed by attempt number n and you can also write that down like this i can draw this into a graph and that's what i did so here is the graph that you see if you uh, look into a one percent upgrade chance this is the trend that you see how uh, your chance to succeed is. And there are some interesting things in here. Uh, for example, if we look at the 100 uh, attempts, your chance to have succeeded by them is approximately 63.4%. Uh, so about one in three upgrades at 1% will not be finished when you are at 100 attempts. And this is a common misconception uh, that people have that it's a 1% chance by 100 attempts I should be done, right? Well, no, that's not how it works. You have a chance to be done earlier, so you also have a chance to be done later. Um, if you look at the 150, and this is where the streak breaker comes in, um, you also are not guaranteed to have finished yet, at least without Street Breaker, your chance to succeed is actually 78%. And that means that two out of nine upgrades at 1%, if you're not using a coal ward, will actually take more than 150 attempts. And you can take this further because this line actually never reaches 100%. It never does. At 500 attempts here, that's where I stopped with my calculations, at 500 attempts, your chance to have succeeded is 99.34%. So yes, that is a very high percentage, but it's also 
meaning that every 150 seconds upgrade that you do at a 1% upgrade rate will take more than 500 attempts. Just let that sink in. One out of 152 upgrades take more than 500 preservation wards. Um, so yeah, so the average, average amount of attempts is here at 100. So if we draw a line here, um, we can actually see something very interesting which tells you why this is the average. Uh, it's not just the average. Yeah, you can also calculate it. It's 100% divided by 1. Um, but there is also somehow you can visually see this. And this is because this surface arrow, uh, area down here is the same as the surface area up here. And that's not completely obvious to see, of course, but you can, you can picture it a little bit, right? Um, and this is a very interesting visual aspect that comes into play if you look at the street breaker because of course in everyone you have a street breaker at 150 attempts you have a guaranteed uh, guaranteed uh, chance to succeed and that's what i drew with this green line so at the start this green line follows the blue line is exactly the same it's still a one percent chance but at 150 attempts all of a sudden my chance jumps up to 100 percent um, actually the points behind that line shouldn't be there because there's no way of uh, attempting more than 150 times but it's just to uh, finish the line so this jump here has a big effect on this area uh, so uh, we have now this area down here and we have this small area up here because this line cuts this area in two pieces and this area is not used anymore you cannot be in here as i said there's no way of attempting 190 times to upgrade an enchant if there is a street break at 150. so what does that mean and when this area is smaller than this area 100 is not the average anymore the average actually moves to the left uh, and it moves to about 77 here 77.4 i'll get there in a second but if you look here why this is the average well again this surface area here now is again the same as this surface area it's the same size so that is why this is average and i will not die i know this is a fun with math <laughs> series but i'm not diving into the math why this is 77 um because there are calculations of calculating this, of course. Uh, I just wanted to make this visual here. So I will tell you now the average attempts with street breakers for the um, important percentages. So where well, that's what we're doing here. If you are at 1%, uh, the 150 street breaker uh, counts there, then you go from an average of 100 to 77.4. Um, and that is the one that we just saw. If you are 2% with a 75 street breaker, you go from the average of 50%, 100 divided by 2, to an average about of 38 38.5, 38.6. If you are at 5%, you have a 30 street breaker, you go from 20 to about 15.2. If you are at 10%, you have a 15 street breaker, you go from 10 to 7.5. 7.45 attempts if you are if you have a hundred percent um chance to succeed with a coalescent mode then of course there is no street breaker because you will always succeed so that's that's an obvious one um i took the one percent scenario because right now the base upgrade chance of every enchantment rank so from one to uh, two is zero percent from two to three is also 0%, 0 from 3 to 4, 0%, and from 4 to 5 is 0%. Of course, your refinement points, glyphs of potency, and gold costs for all these upgrades are different. And in this video, I will focus on the last upgrade in this case. So we're going to dive into the final upgrade of enchantments at the moment, from rank 4 to 5, where if you use the coalescent mode, your chance goes to 100%. And this is exactly the same as what we had before with the coalescent ward. 
actually all your coalescent wards will be automatically converted into coalescent modes. There's nothing you have to do for that. They will just be this now. Uh, and this, of course, is very powerful because you will uh, not lose any refinement points here. The only alternative that is at the moment available on the previous server is the primitive modes, which just increases the chance here by one. It's literally plus one. So if you have a 50% chance, you go to 51, etc. So in this video, I'm of, of course going to look at this 1% because the coalescent mode is very nice, but that's not that much to calculate with if we go there. So this is the one that we're going to look at. Um, again, if we are at 1%, the average amount of fails at 1% is 75. I've rounded this a little bit to make the math a little bit more easy to follow. Otherwise, you all get decimals. 77 is also the attempt on which you succeed. Uh, so uh, you would succeed on the 77.4 attempt. So it's actually 76. But for the math, it's not super important. Um, what does this mean? If we have 75 failed attempts at 1%, uh, on every fail, we lose one of these reagents. It's not that you lose everything like it is right now on the live server. When you fail, you lose all your reagents, but you actually use one out of the three. It's randomly selected. So if you have 75 fails, you will lose 25 of each on average, of course. Um, so you lose 25 times this 400 refinement points. You lose 25 of these six cliffs of potency and you lose 25 times this 20 gold. Now, you can, of course, also make use of these slots in front, and that is where the preservation wards come in. There is something important um, to note when using these, though. If you put a preservation ward in one of these slots, it does protect um, uh, that reagent of being destroyed when it's randomly selected, but the preservation ward you put in here is always destroyed. So if you put a preservation ward in any of these slots, it is going to be destroyed 75 times. So if you put one here, it's either 25 times this one that you lose or 75 preservation wards, not 25 because also destroyed if you go here. So you protect 25 of these with 75 preservation wards. If you put two preservation wards, that means that on a fail, you destroy two preservation wards. Um, so again, you have a choice of 25 of your reagents versus 75 preservation wards. And this makes the math a little bit different than before. And so it's not one to one anymore. Um, so we can write this out, huh? it's 25 of these versus this. We can also make this a little bit simpler because this is just a one to three ratio. So we can go here. Um, now, these things, we can of course check how much this stuff is worth. If you look right now on the PC server, about 400, uh, 400 refinement points are worth about 80,000 AD. It's about five RP that you get for one AD. Um, there's probably uh, options where you can get it even cheaper, but um, yeah, these are the prices on average that I see. If you look at six glyphs of potency, they're worth about 225,000 AD. I've used VIP um, discount on here, 25%. If you don't have that, it's even 300,000. It doesn't really matter that much for the choice itself. If you then look at gold, Gold, 20 gold is about 6,000 AD at the moment. And the three preservation wards are about 45,000 AD. Now these values, of course, are right now and these can change. Uh, but if we compare these, if we do versus, then of course we always want to pick the cheapest one, right? So the cheapest one is the one that we're gonna lose. Um, so that means we're gonna protect these 400,000 RP because these are cheaper. We're going to protect the glyphs of potency because uh, the preservation wards are cheaper and we're going to lose the 20 gold because the preservation wards are more expensive. So we're going to make these choices. And 
if we then do the math on how much we lose on a 1%, then we lose 150 preservation wards in the cheapest method possible. We lose 500 gold and we lose one primitive mode, of course, because it's also used up when you succeed in the end on that 1%. Of course, this is again average. Um, if we add everything up, then we see that on that 1%, we use 2.45 million AD. What you can also say here is that a coalescent mode value in this case is 2.45 million AD. Of course, as I mentioned before, we also have different modes that are going to come up. They were in the forums. Uh, we have one, two, five, and 10. So that's why I also mentioned the streak breaks for those. Um, and we can do the same math for those as well. So let's write this 2.45 million AD down here. And let's go to the 2% where you have on average 39 fails. Again, I picked a number to make the math a little bit simpler. So if we have 39 fails, we use either 39 preservation wars or one third of that uh, of the regular reagents. Um, the choices are exactly the same because the ratio is the same. So for the top two, we use the preservation wars and for the bottom one, we use gold. And if we then calculate the value or the, the destroyed value of reagents, uh, we lose 78 preservation wars and 260 gold, which is total value of 1.248 million AD. Um, the 2% mode that is coming up, I don't have a name for it yet. I also don't have a value. It's all dependent on um, how much it drops in dungeon chests and possible other sources and how much we need it, how much value is given to it. So we have this value, but something is going to be added here. And I'm expecting it to be more than 50,000, but I'm not sure because the 1% mode... Is it really worth 50,000? I don't know. Anyway, we can write this value down here again, uh, and then we can go to the 5%. So in the 5%, we have 15 fails on average, which gives us these reagents that are destroyed. We get uh, 30 preservation wars and 100 gold that is being used, which is 450 per 30,000 uh, AD is 480,000 AD. Again, 5% mode, no idea what it's going to be worth, but we can work with whatever we have, which is 480,000 AD. So in this case, a coalescent ward would be, um, or the upgrade is for, uh, costs you 480,000 AD. If you use a coalescent ward with current prices, it's gonna be a loss. You would have been better off with preservation wards. Anyway, so if we go to the 10%, you can probably guess already, uh, the math is gonna be uh, resulting in a lower value even. Um, so we have six fails, um, two of these regular, uh, are going to be used on average 12 preservation wards 40 gold which gives a total destroyed value of 192,080. we also add this here there are a couple disclaimers that i want to uh, add here as already mentioned the mode prices are not there and so i don't have all the mode prices just for the one percent because it's for sale at brother the sage um also we have here 75 fails and here 39, 15, 6, but the street breaker are at about double these values. So the street breaker for 1% is 150, for 2% is 75, for 5% is 30, and for 10% is 15. So worst case, if you fail twice as much, approximately, you will also use twice as much AD here. Um, Except for the mode, of course, you only use one, but that's only a small part in, in this price. And this one, one is 50,000 and these, it's not even included. So worst case, it can be twice as much. Um, the prices that I use to calculate this, of course, the auction house market is fluctuative. It might change dramatically in mod 22 and the price of gold might go up because we're going to use a lot more gold on these upgrades, the price of refinement points might also go up, um, but we're already using preservation wars, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and also on different platforms, we have different prices. So I will make a calculator in the character builder to calculate um, what 
choices you should make and also what the value of a coalescent world in your situation would be. Um, also, very important to note, uh, as I mentioned at the start, we took the upgrade from rank 4 to rank 5, where you use 400,000 RP. If you have an upgrade that uses half as much RP, then uh, this part will be 40,000 AD and this part will be 45,000 AD. So you would not uh, protect your RP in that case, typically, unless you don't have that much RP, uh, because you can imagine if you use 25 times 200,000 uh, RP, that's 5 million RP all of a sudden gone. Uh, and right now everyone has millions upon millions of RP and we're gonna get more, but this system is going to use much more RP refinement points than the old system. Uh, so the price of refinement points, the price of gold, I can see them going up. It's hard to tell how much because I don't know how much uh, refinement points are actually out there, but I can see them going up. So that concludes this episode of Fun with Math, the refinement system. Uh, if you have any remarks on this video or any suggestions on what to investigate next, feel free to leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.